brainwash the ants. You are the ants. <laughs> What's up guys, Omni here. You guys know how it goes, another day, another video. Last night I tweeted I sleep. What recent news, topic, tweets, videos you want me to talk about tomorrow? Hey guys, today is Monday, September 9th, and yeah, hey man, sorry, I took a freaking week off from making videos for you guys because I got sick. <laughs> I'm still a little sick, you might hear a little nasally in my nose, okay? I was trying to survive the virus. I don't know what I got, okay? All I know is that I was sleeping a lot, I was drinking a lot of tea, and I missed you guys, man. You guys know how it works, right? Every time I get sick or I take a vacation, vacation or a step away from the internet you guys start freaking acting up apparently nikukado avocado the famous mukbang food eater himself got skinny in a video titled two steps ahead dr disrespect finally returned from summer vacation to explain the incident where he confessed that he was talking to a minor that's kind of weird we'll look into that as well lincoln park is apparently back and apparently they have a new lead singer but it's a bit controversial kendrick lamar has officially been chosen to perform at the super bowl which means <laughs> well you guys know what that means all of that and more so let's just get into it i hope you guys missed me because i missed you guys what are we talking about first oh boy all right here we go iconic bell saying talk about dr diller he responded <laughs> Oh my lord, you guys have been following like this entire situation that's been happening with this guy, Dr. Disrespect. But in case you guys don't know, the quick 30 second TLDR of this guy is that years back, Dr. Disrespect got banned on Twitch. People just didn't know why. It was like one of these weird things that occurred and everyone was like, what's going on? And no one really kind of talked about it until like a couple months back where someone basically leaked and said that, yeah, he was talking to a minor. And then he came out with his own Twitter and text that said, yes, guys, hey, I just haven't let you know that, yes, I did talk to a minor. Apparently in the tweet, he kind of like edited to take out the word minor to replace it with another word or something like that. And then he disappeared when the stream and was like, yeah, guys, time to go hit the old dusty trail. <laughs> <laughs> and went on vacation as he was on vacation he's been posting these vogue tweets talking about how like oh he's playing chess while someone else is playing checkers which is kind of weird given the context hinting to the fact that he will be returning in this epic comeback and and everyone's kind of confused right it's kind of like dog you left because you know <laughs> You confess that you were talking to like a young kid like inappropriately and, and now you're talking about like a comeback like wh what do you mean? <laughs> Is he gaslighting us? And their people were rooting for him to come back. Now, before we go over the stream, okay, it was a 20 minute stream where he came back on YouTube and it was. <laughs> But what I hear was an absolute shit show, right? You have people like one of his one of his closest accomplices, okay, Nick Merck, somebody that's kind of been like in this whole thing in this spiel. He's saying like this R word, Doctor Disrespect, is married with children, pushing forty, admits to texting a minor inappropriately. His words, not mine. So I cut ties because obviously that's inexcusable. Now I'm a crap fan for not having his back. Question mark. Bunch of brain rot morons on this app. You guys, I'm not understanding, but yeah, there is support for Dr. Disrespect returning. Well said, if you're defending Dr. Respect, you need to kill yourself right down. Genuinely, this is not a joke. I think you need to stop breathing as soon as possible. <laughs> Yo, Twitter is wild, dog. This person saying we're in a community that Dr. Disrespect can admit to having inappropriate texts with a minor and still return with millions of supporters. This space is not safe for women and girls. My gang gang Keith said the Dr. Disrespect situation is a litmus test for people's critical thinking skills and a lot of people are failing. So guys, to put this into perspective, right? A person who's basically confessed to themselves that they were talking to an underage kid is making a return to the internet and people are hyped for it, right? That's quite literally what's happening. I think what's now happening is people are trying to figure out like, hey, Dr. Disrespect, what's the truth, okay? What's the real thing? How are you playing 3D chess? Like, how are you going to spin and maneuver and menagle this in a way that makes it seem like that you didn't do what you... <laughs> If I tell you guys right now on YouTube that I killed somebody, right? And like, dang, Omni, that's crazy. And then I leave the internet because I'm like embarrassed and shamed. And I'm like, hey guys, the return. <laughs> It's the return. Get hype. But you're like, wait a minute. Isn't this guy a murderer? Like, didn't he, <laughs> didn't he say that he murdered somebody? Like, what is he, what is he coming back from? Like, just imagine just going out here committing crimes, right? And then leaving in shame and be like, I'm back. <laughs> 
So, all right, let's get to the video with Dr. Disrespect. So I lied, it wasn't a 20 minute video. He streamed for five hours and 13 minutes. So I imagine he was playing some video games in the meantime, but I think there was a 20 minute clip that someone found where he kind of like addressed the situation and then he went on to do, I guess, like other things. So I did a bit of a little searching and digging to kind of like see what he was doing on his return. And apparently he's got like some CGI shit that's going on where he's just going in and out of scenes. Like I've never seen anything like this before. By the way, brand new arena champs. Let me give you a little tour. <laughs> oh, come on, don't be shy. Let's take a look. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Brand new state-of-the-art transport system inspired by Arnold Schwarzenegger and Running Man. I it works pretty well. A little tight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this man is still a character, bro. This is absolutely great. This man's like, hey bro, let me just show y'all. Bam! Goes out in a capsule. What am I watching? This is a fever dream. No, this is, oh god, I get it now. I get it. feel like if you are a character and your character is just so well made and created, like people won't care. You can you can murder someone and as long as you are entertaining, right? They we people will be watching. It 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 I think I'm starting to understand how life works. There's something about the VIP lounge. Currently, potentially could be closed down te temporarily. <laughs> but we'll get it all activated. We'll open these doors just for you, Champions Club members, real soon. Where is this man's shoes? Where are your shoes, bro? I don't want to see Dr. Disrespect feet. Oh, okay. All right. So he, he does this for a while, showing off his CGI graphics, right? Fast forward a little bit, and my man is playing Wordle, right? You know, like, just does not care, right? The whole thing is people are waiting for him to come back to talk about what happened. Man goes around, is doing a tour of his CGI apartment, of building, whatever you want to call it, and then he's playing Wordle. I'm, I'm waiting to get to the point where he finally just starts talking about what happened. We've always stayed in our lane. We'll stay in our lane. And continue to just put on a show. You know? Mm. The show must go on. Okay, like I said, entertainment For purposes. almost four years, champs, the public demanded to hear from the doc regarding the Twitch suspension. I guess since you all missed the point with my personal statement, maybe it's time to tell my side of the story. Huh, champs? You see, there was a lawsuit pending, and as part of that arbitration, all parties were not allowed to speak publicly about the case. <laughs> I respected those rules. My lawsuit against Twitch was eventually resolved, as you all know. Mm -hmm. But even then, as part of the settlement, all parties were still prohibited from speaking publicly about the case or the settlement. Okay. <clears throat> However, if one side violated that confidentiality, then the other side could respond. And again, champs, again, I respected all the confidential obligations. Okay. <laughs> mm -mm. But apparently Twitch's own disgruntled employees didn't feel the need to abide by those same obligations. Cody Connors, ex-Twitch employee, wasn't even involved, leaks, Twitch's reported reason. Years later, Cody, why, why you, why do this? What was the point? This was settled professionally, and you, knowing how black and white the internet is, you decided you fucking rat to leak the reported reason Twitch banned me in 2020. <clears throat> I mean, for what? Cody, why did you not know the repercussions from spewing lies about the two time? 
Did you? Okay, so, all right, this is making a little bit more sense. This is what I was trying to get to, the, the meat and bones, right? I mean, let's just take a step back. All right, let's be objective about the situation. Okay, Dr. Disrespect saying, uh, yeah, this entire situation that happened, there was a lawsuit that was pending, and it got settled. Okay, now, just, just, just want to let you guys know when it comes to lawsuits and settlements that just because you settle doesn't mean that something didn't happen. In fact... <laughs> <laughs> I think even uh, Ninja uh, from Mixer, you know, our gang gang Mixer from Fortnite, he even said, like, if somebody is settling something when it comes to a lawsuit, when it comes to something bad happening, someone did something somewhere, right? So if you got to settle, that means you kind of already put your foot in the water. You already got your hand caught in the cookie jar. You're just trying to figure out how to get it, take it back out without, you know, suffering the consequences. But the settlement was basically like, everyone's going to shut up and not say anything about this. All parties are agreeing to not talk about anything okay nothing ever happened and some dude named cody connors was like actually <laughs> four years later let me tell you guys the real reason why the dog got taken off switch's platform and it opened up basically pandora's box do you not know the repercussions of accusing me cody connors you see you <clears throat> don't know shit and it was obvious from your tweet you didn't have any firsthand knowledge of my dispute with twitch Okay. You said that I got banned from Twitch because I was sexting a minor through Whisper's messages. <laughs> do you even know what the legal definition of sexting is? <laughs> I do. And yeah, I used Twitch's Whispers, but trust me, I wasn't sexting anyone. <laughs> <laughs> is there a legal definition of sexting? <laughs> All right, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me go back to his uh, his, uh, his Twitch uh, message, his confession that he put on uh, Twitter really fast. Because this is this is already, this is getting good. This is great. This is He's like a freaking Phoenix Wright character, dog. And then now deleted confession that he had made. I don't know why he deleted it. I don't know why he put it up there if he was going to delete it. But uh, yeah, he said, uh, were there Twitch whisper messages with an individual minor back in 2017? The answer is yes. Okay, so there were... <laughs> There was a back and forth. These were casual mutual conversations that sometimes lean too much in the direction of being inappropriate, but nothing more. So in the direction, the question is, what do you mean being inappropriate, right? What, what, what do you mean by that? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Are we threading the line of what is sexting and what is talking to a minor inappropriate? Like, you know, I was talking to a minor and yeah, it was inappropriate, but was it sexting? No, okay? I didn't quite literally start going into role play fantasy type situation. I don't think anyone cares. I think that's why everyone's saying release the whispers because like if you have the evidence, let's, let's be for real, right? If you didn't do anything thing that you said that you didn't do if you didn't sex it wasn't inappropriate and you have the, the messages and you have the evidence then just release it right <laughs> hey guys i wasn't talking inappropriate to a minor it wasn't it wasn't bad at all here look here it is and be like oh wow you're right it wasn't bad at all right that's what you would do if it wasn't bad but you're not gonna do that because it was probably bad you also said the word minor cody i even made sure that word was emphasized in my statement, edited, etc., just to make sure these so-called journalists would pick up on it. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, did they ever, champs. When you and all these so-called journalists, Cody, fired off your tweets, did any of you consider that the Twitch user may have been over the legal age of consent at the time of the messages? You didn't. Neither did any of these journalists and neither did Twitch at the time of the ban. You also tried to tell the world that I was trying to meet up with this user at TwitchCon, but you're wrong. <laughs> wait, wait a minute, Dr. Disrespect. Okay, are you telling me your 4D plan was to lie? <laughs> you're saying that you confessed and your confession was a lie and that you tricked everyone by 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 giving everyone false testimony and then you're like psych you idiots how dare you take me for my word i use the word minor but you ever considered that maybe i'm lying <laughs> what do you what huh someone's got to make sense of this so I'm, I'm i'm genuinely trying to be objective here like if he's got a case right if he's got something where like he can be defended or maybe he's not a bad guy i'm down to listen right but so far I feel like I'm being gaslighted by the, the two-timer, the, the three-timer here. I, I feel like I, I'm getting champed. Let's set the record straight. <clears throat> I never intended to meet this user ever. Okay. We never made plans to meet at TwitchCon or anywhere else. And in fact, 
we n never met. Okay. In person, ever. Your bullshit accusations gave false courage to other former Twitch employees to make shit up as well. Hmm. I suspect all of you sort of planned and coordinated this attack. These big time publications, these, these journalists, these various outlets are sort of just gossip, gossip channels now. Don't you think, champs? They act like they're just gossip channels now without any real journalism and real research happening. I'm a little confused. And by the way, we're not a gossip channel, but I'm a little confused because like, I'm just talking about the facts, like what's objectively quite there. And one of the objective facts was just quite literally his tweet. So how was it gossip when you're the one? <laughs> Am I taking crazy pills? Am I lo I'm losing my mind here, bro. We're just responding to what you said. What am I missing? They report on all this based on leaks from two former Twitch employees, one of whom was supposedly on the trust and safety team. Sure. If these anonymous sources worked on the trust and safety team at the time of my Twitch suspension in 2020, mm -hmm. then you would hope they would tell the truth. Yeah. But apparently that's just too much to ask. Mm. If these former trust and safety team members, and by the way, I know exactly who they are, <laughs> actually had firsthand knowledge, then what they conveniently left out is one, Twitch's trust and safety team, the same employees that decided to ban me, internally admitted that the whisper messages were not sexting. Hmm. And two, Twitch's trust and safety team, the same employees that decided to ban me, internally acknowledged that the whispers did not constitute child sexual abuse material CSAM. Okay. I'll say it again. Neither I nor the Twitch user exchanged any sexual graphic messages or images. Cody Connors and these other anonymous sources are trying to paint a picture that I was exchanging sexually explicit messages and photos with this Twitch user. That never happened. I even used the word inappropriate purposely. And look at how it was defined by everyone, champs. Huh? Including these defaming articles. I'm sorry, but mutual bantering with inappropriate jokes taken out of context should have never led to me getting banned from Twitch in the first place. I mean, how would each of you look if all of your private DMs, your text messages, your chats were looked at, dissected, and taken out of context by someone who's deliberately trying to find something inappropriate in those words? That's true. Okay, <clears throat> I'm, I think he's got a point. I, <laughs> I think he's got a point. Okay, I think there's definitely there could be an agenda that's going against Doctor Disrespect, and people were trying to get him canceled. There could it was probably a planned attack. It was probably coordinated. A bunch of people were like, "Hey guys, we're going to expose Doctor Disrespect in 2024. It's going to happen." I, I think it was on purpose. Okay, I don't think he is actually lying about this one. And also, yes, I think it's very easy to take a lot of texts and conversations between people and take it out of context specifically to draw specific conclusions. We know how terrible the internet is, right? You can say the sky is blue and then someone on Twitter will be like, wow, so you hate gay people? You <laughs> right? We know how that works as well. So I, I, he's not wrong when it comes to taking things out of context. If I'm going to play devil's advocate, it sounds like Dr. Disrespect here is trying to communicate that he was talking with someone who was underage and it was a little bit inappropriate, but it wasn't that big of a deal. Almost like kind of like, yes, it was just some friendly banter back and forth, but he had no intention to connect with this person at all. He had no intent to, to meet up with this person whatsoever. Just, just nothing. Just like was one of those passerby type conversations which I, I don't, I don't know if I can like buy guys because like quite literally like Twitch whispers, hello, you're, you're doctor disrespect. You can communicate with anybody anywhere at any time in any kind of way. And you're talking inappropriately with somebody on Twitch whispers one-on-one, -on -one, right? That one person, you're making a connection with one person and one person only, right? That feels like, like if you choose to use your time to talk to one specific person, it's because you're trying to create a connection, a relationship in some kind of way. Now, whether that conversation or that relationship developed, you know, it's one thing, but I don't know. I just don't 
understand the concept of somebody as big as him just you know casually spending time whispering on twitch talking to somebody inappropriately and being like yeah it wasn't meant to be anything of a big deal that's i don't know he's saying it was just little banter but other people were saying that he was trying to go meet up with this person <clears throat> and this is not a situation where victim publicly accuses someone of wrongdoing that never happened here no we're talking about allegations that Twitch made against me as a half-baked reason for justifying their actions of suspending and shutting down my channel. Okay. Allegations that Twitch made without even a legal analysis of whether the whisper messages were legal. Hmm? You see, I engage with my community. I engage with other streamers. And through Twitch whispers, I communicate with Twitch users. Conversations that consisted of a variety of playing games and gaming politics, content creation, random stuff. This was the extent of my whispers with this Twitch user. On June 21st, 2020, my ex-Twitch partner manager learns that I exchanged whispers with the Twitch user. <laughs> and I say ex-partner manager because for years, this guy didn't do anything for me, my community, or my channel. For years, I'm talking no front page love. You're talking about the face of the platform, right? Literally, the face of the platform. We heart, and I know Champions Club remembers this. We got, we got zero front page love on the website. We don't care. We don't care. We don't care about your relationship with your partner manager. Come on, come on, bro. Stay on topic. Because this is, he's reading from a script, by the way. So this is, come on, this is fluff, brother. Get back on topic. Uh, was never on my channel. He didn't follow me on Twitter. He, he wouldn't even inform us about Twitch rival tournaments. We're talking about the two time. Come on, brother. Twitch rival tournament. Oh, I'm sorry. I got, I would you, would you want to play in it? <laughs> we got zero support from this guy. And it was just so obvious that he carried a grudge against the two time. So after we signed with Twitch in 2019, we asked for a new partner manager and just a few months later, that ex Twitch partner manager is directly involved with getting me banned. <laughs> Coincidence? Hmm. I think not. Is he gonna say it? Can I? Can I be real with you guys? I the, the ex Twitch partner. I don't know who he is. Right? I think it's is it the Cody guy. I'm not sure. He could have a vendetta. He he might have one. But. I don't think anyone cares to be honest like I, I think it's just objectively like however this situation turned out whatever it got revealed settlement like the long and short of it is just quite literally like dude were you were you were you were you texting inappropriately like in the whispers were you over here were you fully cooling with some minor that's it was that what you was doing were you or were you not it's like a simple question. We, we don't need to turn this into a, a spectacle. And if it's the answer is like, yes, I got inappropriate. I shouldn't have done it. Then just say that. But if it was like, no, I never did that. Then just show the Twitch whispers, brother. Twitch user tells the ex Twitch partner manager that they do not want to report anything to Twitch. I'll repeat that sentence one more time, just in case anybody missed that one. Yes, I get the it. Twitch user tells this ex Twitch partner manager that they do not want to report anything to Twitch. The minor in question. This ex-Twitch partner manager encourages the user and even directs them to file a report directly with Twitch, even though the user told him clearly that we never physically met anywhere and that no photographs were exchanged. Okay. On June 24th, 2020, Twitch's special operations team receives and reviews the user's report. They find no issues and determine that it did not warrant any further escalation to Twitch's law enforcement response team. Hmm. 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 That would have been the end. <laughs> that should have been the end. But that partner manager, <clears throat> oh boy, oh boy, did he had it out. He had, he had it out for the two time. He finds out that no further action will be taken. So what does he do? He personally escalates the report to a friend on the Twitch's LER team. The LER team, remember, that's the Twitch's law enforcement response team. Yeah. He escalates the report to a friend on Twitch's LER team. So a day later, on June 25th, the LER analyst pulls the entirety of the whisper messages and begins discussing them 
with his director of the LER team. Okay. Mind you, this director is on vacation at that time and does not have access to their computer or work files. L- let me just remind you, I went through a multi-year, multi mil a, a big time arbitration. Okay. And, uh, you know, you discover a lot of stuff. Mind you, this director is on vacation at that time. The LER analyst cherry picks and sends a few targeted excerpts out of context from the whisper messages to this director. Now, if you do this, you can make anyone's messages look inappropriate, even when they aren't. Within less than one hour, this LER analyst and his director have made the decision to suspend me from Twitch. Twitch submits a report to NCMEC. You guys all read those little articles, huh? The NCMEC. Twitch submits that report. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Guess what? As far as I know, and over four years have passed, they didn't do anything with the report. As far as I know, they didn't escalate Twitch's report to law enforcement. (laughs) Mind you, the same people that made this decision admit internally that the messages did not constitute sexting. All right, again, we're drawing the line between sexting and inappropriate communication with a potential minor apparently and it sounds like it was not escalated to the point where they needed to arrest this man <laughs> but whoever this dude is this this twitch guy that kept escalating it sounds like it was enough information that was going on for it to be escalated over and over again does this guy have a vendetta i don't know or does this guy have a genuine concern for what's happening i i don't know that either but yeah he kept escalating and it seems like it got escalated to the point where he got banned on twitch so someone read these messages and said yeah these are bad enough sorry doc we gotta ban you right so again it goes back down to the question over and over is to just what are the whispers release the whispers what did you say bro because maybe it wasn't sexting right but it couldn't have been nothing either right if it was nothing and people read it and like this is nothing you're not getting banned for it so it it had to have been something and clearly you're trying to say like yeah it wasn't something that involved law enforcer like but Come on, we get what's happening here. Like, we, we get what's happening here. Same people that made this decision at Twitch admit internally that the messages did not warrant any child sexual abuse material charge. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me while admitted they did not perform any legal analysis of whether the messages exchanged were illegal in any way. It was arbitrary, it sounds like. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me while admitting that they never investigated the age of consent in the jurisdiction where the user's messages were sent and received. Hmm. Twitch makes this decision to terminate my contract and ban me without ever interviewing me, the user, or any other third party, including the partner manager. It's fucking unbelievable! <laughs> Just to pause. That is kind of wild. What was in those whispers, brother? What did you say? What did you do? <laughs> I mean, as you guys know, these are usually at will contracts, right? And then you can just ban whoever the hell you want for whatever reason you want with your corporation. So what did you say, bro, that they didn't even have the, the, the... That's what I'm trying to say. If it was so kind of like enough to have a discussion, they would have a discussion. So what did this oh my god and now we need to know is this lost media is this lost art are we never going to see the twitch whispers oh god i i hope that i live to play grand theft auto to to finish hunter hunter and to also see the doctor disrespect twitch whispers you all right brother you all right brother keep it i'm not gonna get into every detail regarding my legal case but these former twitch employees that claim to have firsthand knowledge They just don't have a clue. They didn't report any facts. The judge in the case determined that the whispers were not illegal. (laughs) So then why did Twitch use these messages against me? I, I, why did Twitch treat the doc so differently from their other streamers? Yeah. What happened brother? Why why don't they like you outside of the obvious? I mean, just take a look at me. Right. Unfiltered. The realest motherfucker in this industry. That wasn't it. Six foot eight. Gorgeous. <laughs> athletic. Successful. College degree. College athlete. Bourbon business. Gaming studio. Beautiful family. And trust me, we've worked hard 
for over a decade to improve as a person, a husband, and father, and to get where we're at today. I mean, I'm in such a good place today. Okay. And all these people, they all act like they're just so perfect. I'm not perfect. That's fair. I agree with them on that. I don't claim to be perfect. Eh, sometimes I do. But I also didn't do all the shit that they're saying I did. <clears throat> but then that doesn't make a story, right? They wanted media attention. The media wants controversy. Yes. And by sensationalizing all this with big and accurate headlines like sexting and sexually explicit, you all got what you wanted at the expense of the tube time. The reality is they wanted to cut down the dock, plain and simple. But why? Take a look at some of these horrendous acts of Twitch streamers that were never banned. I've got some examples right here. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Before be, before you project, okay? Before you project, then just start saying it like it sounds like he's saying again that Twitch had a personal vendetta to ban him because he's a six foot eight male, successful, happy white man. Is that <laughs> that's the I mean, I'm mean, I'm pretty sure what he's reading from this script was probably like looked over by his lawyer before he spoke it and everything. But that's what he's claiming is the reason. He feel like he's being targeted, and that's why he got removed from the platform. But even after all of this time of seeing all his sides, seeing what they had to say from Cody and all this everything, something still doesn't add up. And I again I keep saying I feel like I'm just like saying the same thing over and over again, right? These these twitch whispers will explain every thing right it'll either be like oh okay doc was a little weird but not like to the point where it needed to be that big of a deal or dang bro why did you say these things i can see why twitch wanted to take a step back i can see why maybe that ex twitch partner was basically like yo bro we need to get this man removed because he's a menace to society example number one a streamer that frequently used the n-word while publicly streaming which constitutes a violation of Twitch's policies if accompanied by hateful intent. Twitch scheduled a meeting with the streamer to ascertain his intent to determine whether his contact was a violation of Twitch's policies, ultimately determining it was not a breach of Twitch's policies. Why wasn't I called into a, into a meeting? Why wasn't my intent taken into consideration, champs? <laughs> We're comparing the saying the N word uh, to potentially messaging minors. Is is that where we are now, brother? Come on, man. Come on, dog. Come on. I mean, look, I honestly want to give uh, the dogs the benefit of the doubt because I want to be like, do you have a case? Like, is it I, I really want to know if there's information that we're missing that quite literally would make this case make sense because there's still so many questions that I have about it. But like this one, come on, brother, come on. I, we can do better. What other examples do you have? Example number two. Streamer was reported for discussing doing things with deceased animals and discussing all while live streaming. Never suspended, but instead given a multi-million dollar contract. Who are you talking about? Example number three. Who, who was Streamer that? was reported for a sexually explicit stream involving children and telling children to send Snapchats of them playing with themselves. Never suspended, but instead, hmm, given a multi-million dollar contract. Who? Who? <laughs> All right, so now does he want us to go look into these other people? What is he talking about, brother? But now we're like, all right, brother. Okay, wait a minute. What? This is some claims. These are some claims, brother. Who are you talking about? It's so obvious that certain Twitch executives, employees involved had personal biases against the doc and used all of this as an opportunity to terminate my contract. Maybe. Go back and look at the timing of all this, too. Huh. The doc's termination lines up with two preferable, profitable, and expensive streamers leaving Mixer. Ninja? As soon as Twitch knew that Mixer had failed. And go look at the timing. These other expensive streamers needed a new streaming platform. So Twitch rushed through its decision to terminate the two time. That's the incentive you think? You see, I shouldn't even be banned from Twitch.
It has affected us on so many levels back in 2020 and now in 2024. And Cody, Connors, I just have to say it again. Why would you do this? Like I said, this was handled professionally years ago. No fucking wrongdoing. But because of you, Cody, we just lost... Ah, fuck, man. Unfortunately, we have to lay off people from Midnight Society. Right? Because of you, Cody. Okay, I think we can stop right here. I think we've <laughs> we've done enough deep dive of this situation. Here's what I think. I think the long and short of it is that the chat logs will basically explain everything. And the fact that they're not being released by the two timer and he's not being transparent about what was said between him and the person is because it's incriminating. That's it. It's quite literally comes down to that, right? Like I'm going to be completely frank. Like, let's say he was messaging somebody he didn't know that they were minor. Though I think apparently it got confirmed someone said later on that they knew that it was a minor and kept continued to talk with them but like even if you were having this discussion and it got a little weird or there was like a sexual joke or something i don't know right people sometimes are a little weird on the internet and they just whatever they say shit right but if it wasn't that big of a deal the entire the internet is not going to go poking at them but if gang gang was basically saying things like yeah you're a minor and then it was like hey and then yeah i'm a, <laughs> i'm a it was getting a little creepy i think that people will be able to decipher people are stupid but also they're not stupid right and i there's a purposeful reason why the twitch whispers are not being released and i think it's because it's incriminating and i think that's quite literally the long and short of it so that's the end of the situation okay the entirety of the internet are basically being like yo doctor disrespect bro you're <laughs> You're still a weirdo, man. You're still on the list when it comes with Drake, but he's going to be successful. He still has a very large, huge fan base, right? So it doesn't matter because he's entertaining. It's, it's, it's interesting, right? You can basically continue to do whatever the hell you want to do on the internet as long as you provide a value and a product to people who just don't care about your kind of character, okay? And if you can make it vague enough where you feel like maybe there's things that are back and forth, it doesn't matter. Here's the thing. In a world where Dr. Disrespect is innocent and it's not a big deal and this Cody Connor guys and this conversation is not a big deal, let's say it quite literally is true. Let's, I know people want to kind of like just jump jump down the throat of Dr. Respect and just say that he's some bad guy, right? But what if he's not, and it's just not as bad as it looks, right, kind of situation? Then we know how the internet is, right? They're vultures, and they will just try to kill you because, you know, you can be killed. If there's a target on your back, people will look for a reason to murder you. That's just quite literally how it is. And if he is, with his back against the wall, pissed off because his things are escalating to the point that it is it still feels like to me that the way that you clear yourself is to just be transparent and release the logs but i don't think that will ever happen so we're just in a situation where you either take his word for it or you, you listen to cody connors we still don't have enough information to come to the ultimate conclusion to this situation that's what's happening here we're still basing everything on context and leaks and the testimonies where we still don't know specifically what happened but we know that everything that happened around it is sus so we're still in the dark even after all of these years with more questions as we get more answers to the situations and we just get more questions oh yeah there was a response from dr lupo a really popular twitch streamer that used to uh, stream with him uh, as well, he had this to say. Some of the responses from the internet. Crazy how Lupo just turns on people. Bitch, what? You want me... What the fuck do you expect? What? You should hold every person that you respect accountable for their mistakes, too. So in the situation where a person that I was working with consistently on both game development and my career as a streamer at the same time, we had collaborated multiple times. Suddenly it turns out that years ago he tried to message a minor to solicit them for sex and it, it got caught and that's why it didn't happen. You expect me to not turn my back? Bro, y'all, there's no way you do not have fucking brain damage from this. 
There's absolutely no way. If, if, if anywhere along that path you go, oh, that's fine, you got something fucked up in your head, dude. I don't give a shit. Clip it. Put it on LSF. <laughs> tag him. I don't give a fuck, dude. He messaged a 17-year-old when he was in his late 30s with a child and married trying to solicit them for sex. And every single time he talks about it, it's going to be sugar-coated. It's going to be dumbed down because at what point do you expect someone to say, yeah, I wanted to fuck a teenager? Do you think he's going to say that? Fuck no. He's going to make it look better for himself every single time. There is no place along that. It doesn't matter if it's Tyler. If it was my fucking brother, I would say the same shit. Because you do not defend that. There's no defending it. Okay? Get your fucking head out of the gutter. The brain rot is fucking killing some of you. And it blows my fucking mind. Yeah, he's going to have a fuckload of people over there that are watching him. Because they don't give a shit. They just want their fucking balloon animals from their clown to move on. Because they're... <laughs> Because that's that's just that's the the fucking that's the the community that he's grown. That's fine, whatever. I don't give a shit. But if you expect me to associate with that or anybody that has any respect for themselves to associate with that in any way, you're fucking lost, dude. It's very clear cut. He said on Twitter himself that he messaged a minor and they they were it, it, inappropriately. He said those words himself. Yeah, mm -hmm. he went and deleted it, tried to edit it multiple times. But y'all, what the fuck is wrong with you? Pull your heads out of your asses. It's not, this is not a thing to argue about. This ain't like support, you know, this isn't, this isn't a, a fucking, this isn't a cultural thing. It's not like some, some singular event at a time. This is a dude tried to fuck a teenager. Done. Yeah, well, Jerry Seinfeld, yeah, Jerry Seinfeld's fucking gross too. I see people bring that shit up all the time. Still, still disgust me as well. Jerry, what about Jerry? Seinfeld is a shit show anyway, but that's besides the point. Yeah, dang, Doc Lupo going off on and said, "Look, it is what it is. This is exactly what he did. He got caught. And he's trying to sugarcoat it. <laughs> he's trying to project it and make it seem like there's some ex employees that are out to get him. But quite literally, my man's got caught with sand in the cookie jar, and now he's trying to pull it out and make it seem like it wasn't that bad after all. In my opinion, I think that if the Doc wants to clear his name, he has to release the whispers. That's it." That's, I think that's the easiest way. If it wasn't really that big of a deal, if it's, if it's not bad, just, just let people see it. And then I don't think he will because it is an incriminating, right? It's just, it is that bad. If it's not that bad, you can show it, but it is that bad, so he can't. Like, can we can we all agree that that's basically where we are at this point? If nothing bad occurred, <laughs> then you can show it and be like, yeah, but, but you can't because it was. And I... I don't understand how anyone can refute that basic line of reasoning here is that that's what's happening right now. Everyone can play devil's advocate. We can point fingers. We can try to project and point to other people who are doing bad things. Sure, there might be favoritism. Sure, there's maybe other things that's happening down the line as well that kind of make things kind of scuffed. But when you get to the, the bare brass tacks of the situation, it just falls down to that. And if you can't basically let people see what you're doing, it's because you don't want people to see what you're doing. All right, guys. Next up on the list, we got to talk about Nika Kato Avocado. Man, I love talking about this guy. He is absolutely hilarious. There's so much lore behind this uh, YouTuber right here. I actually saw a clip, or no, no, it was a picture where someone said, Why I'm afraid of Nika Kato Avocado. And I was like, Huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. This is like a, uh, okay. I'm, 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 let me let me start over. For those of you guys who don't know, this is Nikki Kato Avocado. He runs a video that says two steps ahead. Okay, and then this video is a 25 minutes. We'll take a look at it real quick. He's skinny, and people are like, "What the hell is actually happening? What do you mean you're two steps ahead?" And I know what this is referring to. Okay, there's a clip of Nikki Kato when he's big, right? When he's jumping. He's like two steps ahead or something like that he talks like an evil mastermind like he always knows what he's doing quite literally in every situation like this is all a part of the master plan we all know he's this character this character that he has is like this this very violent belligerent crazy person who eats food and then just blows up at the handle and goes wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's hilarious. He is also an entertainer. He's also a character and a person. I have always enjoyed Nikocado Avocado's antics. I have always found him funny and I find like every single meme that he's in, I am cracking up and laughing. But it seems like he is now entering a new era, a chapter where apparently, I think the premise was that uh, he was 
pushing out content where he was a big boy, you know, basically doing the mukbangs and eating kind of like pre-recorded, but in the background, he was two steps ahead on the treadmill, you know, getting them steps in, getting them the, the 1,000, 10,000 steps every single day and losing weight. And now he's back on the internet to let everyone know that he's the Aizen of the world. And he's been fooling you all into thinking that he's some big guy getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, quite literally in the background, he was getting skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. Two steps ahead. I am always two steps ahead. This has been the greatest social experiment for my entire life. It's alluring. It's compelling. Wait, pause. I know you guys are. I know you guys are trying not to lose it. I know you're trying to lose it. Okay. I just want to say. I just want to. I want to take credit for this, by the way. He might have taken this from me. Okay. I quite literally said that Nikocado Avocado should do an experiment, where as he was getting bigger, you know, he was getting the mukbang, and everyone was worried about his health because he was eating, and people thought he was going to eat himself into an early grave. And I said, Hey, brother, you should do the opposite. An experiment where you go backwards and you go on a workout journey, and maybe he has pre-recorded. I don't know. It would be really cool if he had pre-recorded videos of him working out and the journey of him losing weight. Kind of like how he showed himself gaining weight. Not if he had pre-recorded content of him losing weight and then in the background, he's gaining weight again. <laughs> That's what somebody would do if they're always two steps ahead. It's gripping to observe all these unwell, disoriented beings roam the internet in search of stories ideas, rivalries, where they feel encouraged and engaged, where they involve themselves with the stories and become a product of influence. Thirsty for a distraction from time unspent. Okay, man, I get it. I, I don't know why he's talking. Why are you doing this? Why? You're not even a villain. You don't even do bad things. <laughs> Why is he talking like a villain when he doesn't even do like villainous things? What, what, what is this persona? <laughs> this man pisses me off so much because it just doesn't make sense. I don't get it. He's not the Riddler. He's not the Joker. He's not out here about to step. Hey, you have 10 seconds, Batman, to figure like you're not. But, but why? Why did you pick this up? So I am the villain because I've made myself one. And you will continue to consume these stories about me year after year after year for as long as I tell the internet that I am the villain. Stories that permeate and linger and infect the minds of the ants. Influence the ants. Brainwash the ants. You are the ants. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. Get this man an award. All right, put this gang gang and okay. All right, I'm sold. I'm settled. I, I, I apologize. I apologize. Nikocado Avocado, I was not familiar with your game. That might have been one of the funniest one-liner drops I have seen in a long time. My man said, you are the ants. <laughs> now, how is he not laughing, brother? Oh, my God. Okay. All right, I'm sold. I get it. I got tricked. My bad, bro. I'm I'm so sorry. Spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. This is a masterpiece. All right. This was on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm already giving it a 10. What? 25 minutes. What is he going to talk about? Today, I woke up from a very long dream. And I also woke up having lost 250 pounds off of my body. Good lord. Yet just yesterday, people were calling me fat and sick and boring and irrelevant. People 
People are the most messed up creatures on the entire planet. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and yet I've still managed to stay two steps ahead of everyone. <laughs> Stop it! Stop doing that! Yo, stop it. He keeps doing this thing, right? Where he's just like, nah, 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 nah. Just, and I've managed to do these things from everyone. <laughs> this is this is one cut. There's there's been no cuts. There's there's been no cuts. There's if this was me, I would be cracking up. You guys know me, right? I would be trying not to laugh this entire time. This man is managed to keep a straight face. I, I'm, I'm saying that this man might actually be diabolical because quite literally, <laughs> and he's right, people are fucked up. They're weird as hell, bro. But oh my God, this is so good. This is so good. This is content. This is why YouTube exists. No cuts? You still here? Wow, professional. The joke's on you. Stop looking at me. <laughs> Stop uh, looking at me. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Noodle, you're so cute. Oh, you're so cute. Yeah. Is he about to do a mug bag? Oh, you're so cute. Yeah. You like that. You look like a big green ball. Yeah, you look like a big green avocado. Oh my God! This is ah oh God. I'm I'm at a loss of words. I this is this is spectacular. I don't care what anybody says. I'm Team Nikocado Avocado. Okay, I'm defending this man. I will literally sacrifice my firstborn for this guy and his antics. This this is why the internet exists. This is why YouTube is so great. I. I <laughs> So uh, I'm not going to watch the whole thing. I'm guessing he's about to do a bit of a mukbang bong. My God. Yeah, here, let so. me give you your mush. What well, here? Ooh, that looks delicious. Is that squid ink? Try some of this. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. This is the life. This is the life. That looks very oh good, actually. Gosh. Is that squid ink? This looks incredible. Incredible. It looks tasty. <gasps> Mr. Noodle. <laughs> oh, I gotta have this. This is this. It. This is worth my soul. This is worth everything. You know, as a person who is a foodie, I mean, he's talking to me. I get it because I live to eat and I eat to live. Quite literally, that's the only reason why I'm living is because I want to eat more. If, if I couldn't eat delicious foods. I don't know, you know, this, is, this plant is kind of terrible, but yeah, I, I kind of feel what he's saying right here into my soul. The comments saying, let's be real, this is what we hoped for, rather than facing him passing due to complications caused by his heavy weight. Yeah, we, <laughs> this is exactly what people were hoping for. The fact that he was able to keep this entirely private with no one in the world telling the secret while actively creating rumors of heart attacks and failed weight loss is so complex, I can't even wrap my head around it. Changed man, changed life, villainous shaved hair. Bro did the social experiment to the extreme and i mean to the extreme he managed to put a shame to all of us but making his body fat and suddenly getting fit he's the definition of change this video is officially history of youtube i agree i think this is probably one of the best spectacles that i have seen on the internet okay pulling a complete 180 and making everyone think that you were just big and chubby and fat and just ruining your life and in the background you're sitting there working out and losing weight and getting healthy creating this image of who you are which you know I, I mean, obviously, right? It's a bad look if it was the case. It's great that he decided to pull a 180 and trick us, but if he wasn't tricking us, right, and he was falling into this rabbit hole, well, that's pretty scary, bro. Why would you leave people on to thinking that you're destroying your life, man? Like, come on, brother. That's, that's terrifying. I'm glad that this was the result, though. I'm glad that he was listening to people or that his entire plan was never to you know spiral out of control in the first place but yeah that's him that's the avocado he's back and he's skinny and he's gonna get to you mukbangs and i don't know there might be a, a chubby version of him right now <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> because he mukbanged himself back to gaining back his 150 pounds and we just don't know where he is what where is he he's always two steps ahead what does he look like right now live in real life because this could be him from like a year ago who knows this man is an absolute genius all right what else do we got here bro okay it says here kendrick is going to perform at the next super bowl kendrick lamar <laughs> i'm sorry i know i'm like I'm, i read something this this is absurd right i feel like 2024 is absurd and the fact that kendrick lamar is going to be at the halftime show february 9th 2025 means that in front of millions the entire world he's going to be essentially playing they not like us that's if i'm drake can i say it so can I say it, editor, everybody? Can I just say it? I'm I'm, I'm just going to say it. If I'm Drake, I got to kill myself. I just have to. I just, <laughs> I have to. There's no way that the entire world is going to be out here and saying certified file. Wow, wow, wow. There's no way a minor, the entire world is about to, <laughs> oh my freaking God. That's, this is bullying. This is internet bullying. How did this get like, isn't there like people like in the higher ups, like in the communities who can stop this and say, look, you guys have gone too far. You can't keep doing this to Drake. Okay. <laughs> he was the king of hip hop. He's, he's got too much money. I thought these people were supposed to be protected by the Illuminati dog. What is going on? I've already talked about this with you guys, right? I was wondering if like, what would happen if Kendrick Lamar's song, They Not Like Us got nominated at the, what is it? Is, I always forget, is it the Grammys or the Oscars? I always forget which one it is for music, right? But what if it did and Drake was in the concert? Drake, what do you, what do you do when you're Drake? If you don't kill yourself, what do you do? You got to make music. You got to, you got to make hotline bling too. You got to make you got to drop a banger or a popper because right now, bro, this is L after I've never seen someone so huge take so many L's. You know the meme where it's like, stop it, he's already dead? Well, I feel like Kendrick is just taking that and he just keeps going and he keeps beating this man's dead body. I heard there was rumors that like Kendrick was like, hey, bro, it's only halftime, right? Now it's time for me to come in. And then quite literally, now he's going to be on the halftime show. <laughs> Just quit. You, th this is a moral and a, a lesson for everyone that sometimes you have to hold the L. Sometimes just say sorry. Sometimes just be like, you know what? I'm out of my league. I'm out of my game. And my bad, brother. J. Cole was right. Because if this was not the case, J. Cole might have been in this one as well. This could have been him stomping two dead bodies this entire time. And luckily, J. Cole is out there riding his bike, chilling, working on something on his music. But damn. That's that's an, That's it seems like it's a meme i thought when i first heard about this i was like there ain't no way ain't no way but we get in kendrick and everyone's just going to be waiting for them to play they not like us they not like i feel like they not like us is just one of the greatest songs in history and i can't wait for it i'm excited for this <laughs> drake what are you going to do just say you're sorry, okay? Don't make any, actually Drake, keep making music. Keep fighting back, okay? As long as Drake keeps fighting back, we'll keep getting more Kendrick. And I'm okay with that timeline. This is some, but, but, but do something, Drake, okay? Drop a banger, okay? Don't try to fight Kendrick, okay? Make better music. Get number one on the charts. Make a banger because Drake, you do, do you Drizzy, look, Drizzy, Drizzy, Drizzy. You do make the music, the boppers that get the people nodding and chilling at the club. So stick to what you do best, baby, and get that game, get that back. Get, bring that back. Right? That's how you come back and stake into your element. You don't want to fight with Kendrick. Kendrick's a fighter. You're not a fighter, all right? You're an entertainer. Kendrick's a fighter. Don't fight him. Just ignore him. Entertain the masses and keep making the puppets dance, brother. That's that's my suggestion. It starts with one thing. I don't know why. It doesn't even matter how hard you try. That's right. Lincoln Park is back. Um, what in the hell, bro? <laughs> Lincoln Park is one of my favorite bands of all time. A lot of people's favorite bands of all time. Back when I was an edgy teenager and I was dealing with parents who were telling me to do things like my homework and pissing me off, you know, I needed to escape from the world, you know, I'm just emo. I was like, ah, the world hates me. And then, you know, I feel like I'm still that way anyway. The world does hate you. I was right as a kid, by the way. You needed something to de-stress and it was Lincoln Park 
yelling in your ears rest in peace to the homie chester chester will be singing to us yelling his hearts out with mike shinoda rapping in the background with some of the greatest hits of all time lincoln park is one of the greatest bands of all time there's no saying that they're overrated by the way a lot of people like to be like look back and be like you know what? lincoln park wasn't that good no okay if you're one of those people who think that lincoln park was overrated you can just shut up you can get the hell out I, I will fight you i will find you and i'll slap you in the face okay but anyway they came back but they came back with a new lead singer and it's a lady and there's some mixed feelings about her because well two things in the hours following the announcement of emily armstrong has joined lincoln park she has been heavily criticized for her alleged association to scientology and support of danny masterson neither emily nor the band have made the statement regarding these accusations if you guys don't recognize the name danny masterson it's because uh, remember we talked about that whole situation that happened with nickelodeon the silence on set video when it came to all those bad things there was a case that happened with this person by the name of Danny Masterson. This guy from that 70s show, now you recognize him, right? <laughs> Danny Masterson was on trial for, um, yes, and it uh, was a hung jury, but he received a lot of support from a lot of fans, famous people like Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis, who were actually a part of the show as well. And he received a lot of like letters and people were saying like, hey, he's not a bad guy. He was actually a good guy. It wasn't as bad as it looks kind of situation. So people who supported him in this case to kind of help him get free are kind of like frowned upon. And it looks like Emily was one of those people. Anyway, as the entire internet basically jumped down Emily Armstrong's throat, basically saying quite literally, number one, you're into Scientology kind of thing. Number two, this whole Danny Masterson thing. Number three, a lot of people don't like her voice. Some people love her. Some people hate her. It's, it's kind of mixed. It, trying to replace Chester, which is impossible, kind of feels weird because it's like you're, you're trying to fill in the shoes of someone that you literally cannot fill the shoes in. And you, so to do Chester justice is... is it's almost impossible, but some people just don't like her in live performances. It's it's a mixed bag. But she responded and said, hey guys, I'm Emily. I'm new to so many of you, and I wanted to clear the air about something that happened a while back. Several years ago, I was asked to support someone I considered a friend at a court appearance and went to one early hearing as an observer. Soon after, I realized I shouldn't have. I always try to see the good in people, and I misjudged him. I have never spoken with him since unimaginable details emerged and he was later found guilty to say it as clearly as possible i do not condone abuse or violence against women and i empathize with the victims of these crimes so not a bad response basically be like hey i was here to support a homie because i thought he was a homie and i didn't think he did anything bad but then later it came out that it was bad and it was proven and, and i was wrong and sorry for doing that kind of situation that's about it when it comes to emily i, I don't know too much about the scientology and why people hate scientologists actually quite literally i'm, I'm gonna be completely frank and honest with you you guys i've never looked into that rabbit hole all i know is that like people joke about like tom cruise being like a leader of scientologists or something and they, they they might be a little weird or they have some some strange theories and stuff i don't know i heard apparently maybe will smith might be in there i don't know it sounds like it's a cult and people have beliefs but i mean I'm, there's plenty of those around the world so i'm not exactly sure what makes scientology so bad i might have to look into that in the future maybe i'll do like a little deep dive into scientology we'll see but that's um emily armstrong the new lead singer of Lincoln Park and we'll see if she can push through make some good music and revive the band in a way that we would all love and want and basically revive the band because quite literally I, mean, I love Lincoln Park and I would love to see them come up here and make some good music and some good bangers I I listened to some of the songs it didn't hit the same way for me like for me personally it didn't hit but for those if it did hit you then that's good just wasn't my cup of tea but I'm gonna keep my ears open and I'm, I'm gonna stay receptive to it it's, it's not that it has to be Chester I just like we could have probably had a better vocal performance from her but you know we'll see how things play along but all right guys that's all i have for today's video okay but there's more to cover from what's happening last week and what's happening today and tomorrow as well that we're going to get into i just have to stop because i'm sick still <laughs> i'm running really low on energy and i'm struggling out here to be out here on these streets talking with you guys so if it sounds like i'm nasally or it sounds like i'm low energy or if it sounds like i'm just rambling it's because i'm on drugs that's trying to keep me from dying essentially but i love you guys okay i will return i will be back in full force very soon i love you guys i miss you guys i catch y'all later y'all brush your teeth and don't get sick out on these streets because these streets are very sickly all right all right gang gang peace